our friend from Madrid, Juan Pablo. We think about the rest of ships in Spain. Yeah. Please go ahead. Well, uh, thank you very much, Juan. Um, the, the topic of my lecture today is a rest of ship. Uh, I'm, I'm going to focus in, in Spain. Uh, obviously, uh, the rest of ship is a very domestic. Uh, all of you know we have different international conventions, but at the end of the day, it's a very procedural aspect. Let's go. Yeah. So, so uh, I'm going to focus in Spain, but because Spain has a very important uh, characteristics in this sense. We are uh, the, the part of the convention in 1999. So uh, only 10 states are part of the 1999 convention. Uh, the rest of the state, or many states, almost 80 states, are part of the 52 convention. Uh, so it's quite interesting because I'm going to try to explain some difference between both convention and obviously the people who are in Spain. Well, this is a brief agenda for the next for the next 25 to 25 minutes. What is a ship race, legal regime, what is the, the scope of application, the concept of a ship, and obviously the nationality of the ship, condition for the rest, three three important conditions, delegation of, of a maritime claim, the allegation that the ship might be arrested, both the offending ship or the sister ship. Um, the security or warranty. I don't know what, what is more correct with the term security or warranty, but you understand the whole term. Okay. Uh, and lastly, the process for us in Spain. Uh, just uh, an, an example. Um, imagine a ship uh, from Barbados. Barbados, okay? Uh, Enter into a port in Spain uh, and in, due to a wrongful maneuver. Uh, collision with another ship. Imagine a, Can a Canadian ship. Both are in a Spanish port, for example, in Valencia or in Castellón. Okay? Uh, due to collision, the Canadian ships uh, suffer damages, and those damages is a margin claim. Okay? In a minute, I'm going to explain what is a margin claim and what are the claims over in the different instruments. But it's a major thing against the Barbados ship. Uh, so this uh, Canadian ship, obviously, the, the first the first step is call the P9, and then the P9 call the agent on Spain, and then the uh, agent of the P9 club is called to uh, the lawyers, obviously, and gone the, the lawyer is going to uh, present a file on the on the court in order to warranty. In order to arrest this, the, the ship, the uh, Barbados ship is the, uh, the offending ship in that case, in order to warranty the settlement of, of a migrant claim. Okay? Uh, so, well, what's an arrest? An arrest is any detention. So, it's important to know that when we're talking about uh, uh, an arrest, we are talking about a detention of the ship, physical detention, uh, by other accords. To secure a maritime claim, and this is important, this, this, this term, to secure a maritime claim, because that's not include to censor a ship in execution of a judgment. Okay? In a minute, I'm going to talk, I'm going to give you a difference between the preventive method and an executive method. Okay? Uh, well, uh, why it's important this to arrest a ship? Because a ship is a big ticket mobile equipment, so it's the main asset of the de of the debtor. Probably is that not not the main asset. Probably is the only one asset. Due the the, the legal structures in that case is the one ship companies, in which one uh, one company. So we, we have a, a big company divide or or divide up. Yeah, to to speak properly with different uh, branches. Okay, and one of those companies has only one asset that is the ship. So, so uh, a ship owner has as many ships as sorry, as many companies as as many ships. Okay, remember one ship, one company. Um, 
the, the importance of the ship is because, or of the rest of the ship is because the ship is, cap is capable of moving from country to country, from port to port, from jurisdiction to jurisdiction in a regular course of business. So today is in the port of Castellon, tomorrow is in the port of Rotterdam, or tomorrow, in two, two days, is in the port of Rotterdam, or in the port of Hamburg, or wherever. Okay, so if, if you want to arrest the ship, you need to arrest while the ship is in your jurisdiction. Okay. Well, uh, okay, I'm going to talk later about the term jurisdiction because it's quite confusing. Um, well, um, the mobility of the set creates international, of fame creates uh, legal and great risk for market participants. And well, in case of default or in case of plane, the creator will need to cease to arrest the ship as fast as possible, as soon as possible, in order to enforce its claim. Uh, some previous ideas. Um, I say material privilege versus procedural privilege. What does it mean? Um, imagine our case: the Canadian, the Canadian uh, ship. The Canadian ship has a right, a, re a right to recover damages, okay, to claim damages. This is the right. But this right is, I mean, it's a it's a term concept because a right is a term concept. What is the right? That right is important only if you have an instrument to materialize that right. I mean, so you, you may have a material privilege, but this privilege is nothing if you don't have a procedural privilege. And here, the procedural privilege is the arrest, is the process to claim that right. Okay? Um, as well, the arrest is an intermeasure. It's an intermeasure in audita party. What does it mean in audita party? In audita party means that the, the court is going to persist up to the arrest without, uh, without a hearing. I mean, what does it mean? Due to the urgency of the, of the measure, uh, the court is going to arrest the ship without her the argument for the claimant or the respondent in that case. Okay. Uh, and why is this? Because we need to arrest the ship, not in weeks. We don't have weeks, we don't have days. We need we we, we have only hours to arrest the ship. Because as I mentioned before, probably if we wait two days, the, the, the ship is selling out in another jurisdiction. So or maybe so. Or maybe so, whatever you want is gone. Yeah, it's, you don't know what happened with the ship if you don't arrest the ship as soon as possible. Okay. Um, well, the, the effectiveness of, of, the, of the rest is obviously the tension of the ship. Uh, and the tension of the ship, why, why do we say the rest is an, eff, eff, an effectiveness measure? Because it's a powerful powerful weapon in the hands of the claimant to negotiate, to pressure the claimant. Why? Because while the ship is arrested, the ship owner has to pay fees cost, for example, has to continue paying the salaries for the crew, has to continue paying uh, um, um, for the contractual obligation, or even with those Process. Probably one of the charges is going to put the, the, the vessel higher or fire. Sorry. So a, a lot of cost for the for the ship owner, as well a lot of loss of benefits, loss of, loss of income during the, during the period of the time of the rest. Okay. Uh, well, I could here imagine the situation and. Uh, and it's a measure used to for the lawyers, especially for the lawyers. And when, obviously, if you if you look at the real practice, all of the rest I use to negotiate to negotiate the price. Because in my situation, in the the, 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 the previous case, the Canadian the Canadian uh, the Canadian ship. Remember the, the case the Canadian ship and the um, Barbados Barbados ship. Um, if you are the lawyer. Of the Canadian ship, so you are the affected ship so for the collision. You're going to call the lawyer of the of the Barbados ship and say, "Okay, 
I'm going to arrest the ship and I'm going to claim you, for example, not only the damages, imagine 1 million damages, as well, the, uh, the cost of their lawyers, as well, the cost of the um, whatever, and punitive damages, for example. So it's not only 1 million, it's 1 million mass plus all of those costs. At the end of the day, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a claim for 2 million. Uh, okay, so the lawyer of the Barbados ship is going to say, okay, no, I, I, I'm going to pay you just 500,000 euros. So we have a gap between 2 million and 500,000 million. It's not a gap between 1 million, the damages, and 500,000 euros. It's a gap between 2 million and 500,000 euros. So you have a gap bigger in order to reach an agreement for negotiation. So the RFC is very common use for the lawyers to reach an agreement, okay? Uh, as I said, the, the preventive nature of the, of the arrest is an interim measure um, versus executive arrest. Both cases, both measures, in, in both situations, the ship is uh, stopped. It's a detention of the ship. Uh, but the first one, in case of, a, of an arrest, we are talking about the interim measure, is intended to secure a maritime claim and the possibility to execute a judgment on a war. But this judgment on a war has not yet started. I mean, the proceedings of that, uh, of, of that judgment has not yet started. It's a preventive measure, it's a preventive measure, okay? Uh, the second arrest, the executive arrest, is produced to ensure an enforcement or a judgment. So as to ensure the enforcement of a judgment or an award already issued. Do you, you understand the differences? The interim measure, the arrest as an interim measure is previous to the judgment, just is in order to secure a marketing claim, but marketing claim is not uh, whole in, in this arrest process, in the main process. And the executive arrest is in order to enforce or ensure the enforce of a judgment or an award already issued. And the second question is the special nature. Uh, Probably in, in other jurisdictions, as, as well in Spain, we, we, we must differentiate or we must differ between maritime arrest and civil or ordinary arrest. What is the difference? Um, the, uh, the regulation adopted in civil rules in Spain, but probably is quite similar in other jurisdictions, at, at least in civil, in civil law jurisdictions, re require the arrest in, in a civil procedure, which require three important elements. The famous puni juris, the famous puni juris means the, the, the claimant must show before the court that he has a, a, a right. I mean, this is in Latin expression, famous puni juris. Um, the, second, the second condition is the periculum in mora. The periculum in mora is the, uh, the urgency. So it's a, it's a risk that if the arrest is not granted, the ship is selling out. So it exists a real risk of a regulum in a mora, I mean, in, in, a, uh, in case the ship is selling out. And of, obviously the security or the warranty. Uh, as well, the arrest based on Spanish internal legislation, uh, in some cases might be replaced by recording the message, not the, not the detention of the ship, by, um, uh, recording the arrest in the race. Okay, this is the civil or the ordinary measure of arrest. But what happened in case of maritime arrest, maritime detention? The false one is and the curriculum in Mora is not necessary. So the, the lawyer of the claimant just need to make an allegation of the claim make an allegation of the embarkability of the ship, 
and the security. That's it. We don't need to uh, to present evidence on the homos unitures. We don't need to present evidence on the curriculum more due to the urgency of the measure. Okay. And difference with the arrest of ship, uh, sorry, arrest in civil procedure, the arrest, the maritime arrest or the arrest of ship is necessarily materialized in the physical detention. In only in one case, uh, I'm going to talk in, in, in a minute, only in one case, in a very domestic scenario, uh, the, the detention of the ship, of the ship, of, of the ship, sorry, the physical detention of the ship must be uh, replaced for the record, the arrest on the registry. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to pass with very, very, because it's not the, the convention we have in Spain uh, three, uh, three different legal uh, instruments. First, the convention, obviously, as an international text, uh, the convention is the G Geneva Convention from 1999. Uh, with only 10 contracting states, uh, enforcing Spain uh, since 2011. Uh, this convention, the 99 convention, replaced the uh, Brussels Convention from 1952, okay, that was enforcing Spain until obviously 2011, okay. Uh, just very briefly, that the most innovative aspect of this convention, the, this 99 convention, is the expansion of the list of maritime crimes. Um, and the uh, arrest of ship shall only be authorized if the relevant act of judgment can subsequently be enforced against the ship. So well, we have some different, but I'm not going to, to, to stop here um, as well. The, the, when, when I say SMNA, uh, is the Spanish Maritime Navigation Act. Uh, and the Spanish, Spanish uh, Act says the interim measure of arrest of ships shall be governed by the International Convention, obviously, by this act, the maritime legislation, and as a supplementary approach by the terms on the Civil Procedure Act, on the Civil Procedure Rule. So we have in, in our legal system, three different instruments, as I said, the convention, the maritime legislation, and the civil procedure, civil procedure rules. Okay. What is the scope of our, our scope of fabrication or, or the object of the arrest? Well, the main, the, 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 the main object of, of the arrest, obviously, is the ship. So it's the, uh, it's the object of the measure. What is the geographical scope? Obviously, the convention shall be applied only if the ship is in the Spanish jurisdiction or in terms of the, of the instrument within the jurisdiction of any state party. The problem of the term jurisdiction is the same problem as I refer on Monday with the convention on judicial sale of ships. I mean, when, when a ship is on the high seas, under the Article 92 of the uh, Law of the Sea Convention, that ship is under the jurisdiction of the flag state. I mean, so, but that ship is not real in, in, in your jurisdiction because you cannot arrest that ship when the ship is on, on, on the high seas. I mean, the, the, the proper term is within the territory, in the territory of the state. I know that the Jews, when we talk about jurisdiction, all, all of us will have in, in our mind the, the meaning of territory. Okay. But probably, but, but remember, because it was a problem during the uh, working group on the judicial sale convention, the, 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 the ship sailing on high waters is under the jurisdiction of the ship of the flag, of, of the state of the flag. Okay, um, okay the ship, I'm not going to the template. The term ship, because I have we have discussed much in the previous session about the concept of ship. Uh, but just remember that the difference between the convention of 1952, the convention says arrest of civilian ships, but the but the convention in Spain, the convention of 1999 says only arrest of ships. 
not civil ships. Okay, so in Spain, you may arrest ships, civil ships or not civil ships. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to uh, the nationality, the nationality of the ship, but this is important. Um, different scenarios, different scenarios. If we have a foreign ship, so imagine a situation in a Spanish port. Okay, a Spanish port, we have a foreign ship, for example, uh, a flag or a ship with an, uh, this is a Ecuador, I don't know if it's Ecuador in English. Equatorian, Equatorian flag? Okay, Equatorian flag. <laughs> Sorry. No. Um, if, if we are, if we have a foreign ship of a contracting state, Ecuador, Ecuador is part of the, of the uh, it's a contracting state of the, of the convention. So if we have a foreign ship, but that ship is a contracting state in the Geneva Convention, might be arrested, that ship, in Spain, pursuant to any of the maritime claims listed in Article 1. I'm going to tell you what are those claims, okay? Second scenario, we have a foreign ship, but of a state that is not a contracting state, for example, a creation ship. That ship might be arrested, not only pursuant to maritime claims, as well, and due to the Spanish legislation, by any other non-maritime claim, okay? So imagine our situation, a Canadian, a Canadian ship, maritime claims and non-maritime claims. Uh, if we have a Spanish ship. Do you apply both conventions in Spain? No, 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 we have only one convention. 99. No, it's possible because you have to. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> because, because the 99, no, because the 99 convention uh, sets aside. Says, says, uh, so the 52 convention. Um, well, the Spanish ship, this is the first scenario, Spanish ship, the claimant has its principal place of business abroad, so not in Spain. In that case, this is the situation, the ship is in Spanish, the court obviously is in Spain, um, the claimant is not Spanish. In that case, only the ship might be arrested for maritime claims. Okay? And lastly, there's the fourth situation, very domestic situation. We have the ship. Okay, sorry. The ship is Spanish. The claimant is Spanish. And the court is Spanish. So it's a very Spanish situation, like this table. Hini and, and the, the Francisco. So, very Spanish situation. In that case, <coughs> the ship might be arrested for Martin claims and non Martin claims. So, in order to sum up, you can see at the, at the top of the, of the slides, uh, the, it's, a, it's a, a benefit for the claimant if we have a foreign ship or dry in Spain, or sorry, dry in it's beneficial, this instrument, for the debtor if the ship uh, has a flag of a contracting state or if the claimant is, is not Spanish. Okay? So the first condition, uh, the condition for the arrest of the ship, the first one is the allegation of a maritime claim. So remember those three, um, sorry, 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 sorry. those three conditions are necessary, are uh, needed to arrest the ship, okay? So no the formal vulnerabilities, no the frequent mora, only the allegation of the claim, the allegation that the ship might be arrested and the security. Regarding the allegation of a maritime claim, this is the list of both uh, maritime claims of both conventions, the convention from uh, 52 and the 99 convention. So uh, we have, uh, 17 maritime claims in the previous convention and 22 maritime claims in the uh, second convention. Um, this, uh, this is uh, in blue, you can see the, the new additions from, from the previous convention to the 99 convention and very important claims such as damages uh, to the environment, for example, is a very important claim, weaker mobile claims, port canal and pilotage use, 
unpaid insurance premium, for example. So we have different claims uh, new in this in this convention. Okay. Um, the second provision is the or the second condition is the allegation that the sea might be arrested, both the family or the sister. Um, this, those are the conditions for the arrest, the offending sip. I mean, when, when I say the offending sip, is the sip that you are, that has caused the, the, the claim, okay? <coughs> so, is the claim, in our case, for example, is the Barbados claim, but for example, if the, if the claim is for salary of the crew, so is the claim in which the crew uh, sales, etc. So when we talk about the claim ship, is the the ship remember that is the origin of the claim. Okay. The first case is are all of five cases are alternative conditions, not cumulative, okay, but alternative conditions. The case number one is in case the owner of the ship is the debtor of the claim. Okay. In, in, in this case, the convention says, in the moment that the claim arose, and in the moment that the arrest is effective, in both point of in both, in, sorry, in both period of time, the owner has to be the debtor of the claim. The second case is in case of the viable charter, is the debtor of the claim. In that case, the variable charter has to be the debt when the claim arose, and in case uh, and when the uh, ship is arrested, uh, the debtor has to be the variable charter or the owner. On the variable charter, if the claim is a maritime union, not a claim in general, not a maritime claim in general, but a maritime union, a privileged claim. The third case is when the claim is due to the mortgage or hypothetical. The fourth case are very specific claims related to the ownership or possession of the ship. And the, and, the, and the last case, and this is very important, as I said, when the claim against the manager, the operator, or the viable charter, and as I said before, the claim is secured by a maritime union. Okay, and the condition of this maritime union is granted under the law of the state of the arrest. Okay, uh, those are the conditions for the arrest of the sister. So, um, I don't know if I have much time, but uh, I'm going to uh, skip this presentation because well, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's more confusing. I mean, the, the arrest of the ship is something confusing. So, in my decision, you have to arrest. A sister ship is the, the ship that is not the, the origin of the claimant, but is, uh, in my own situation, but is an, another different ship. But this ship is owned by the debtor or by the owner of the offending ship. Okay? But, well, it's quite confusing. Um, uh, and the first condition uh, is the security. Um, regarding the security, um, the, the, I have explained the, cl the claimant powers. What are the claimant powers? To arrest the ship just with the mere allegation of the claim. I mean, it's a very, very important power because you don't need to prove nothing just to present the claim to the court. Those powers are offset by requiring to provide to the claimant a security in order to arrest the ship. What is the aim of this security? To respond to the damages, losses, or costs that might arise caused, caused by the wrongful arrest, in case of a wrongful arrest. Okay? So if at the end of the day the arrest is wrongful, probably the, the, the damages caused by this wrongful arrest are going to be remunerated with the security of the claim. Um, the, the security under the convention is optional, is voluntary. So what well, is voluntary? I mean, it's optional, depends on the, on the court. Under the Spanish legislation, the uh, security is mandatory. And it's mandatory in a, at least 15% of the amount of the claim alleged. And this is quite interesting because our, our legislation refers 
the percentage of the security, not to the damages for this future world for arrest, but to the claim alone. So imagine the situation. I'm claiming, for example, I put uh, an example. I'm claiming just for uh, salary of the crew, for example, uh, I mean, 2,000 euros. Just this is my salary, and I'm claiming, or well, okay, obviously, several months, but I'm claiming and request the arrest for five month salary uh, as, as a crew member. So 10,000 euros. I'm requesting the arrest of a ship with the value of the ship is five million. I mean, a million. I mean, the, the measure is uncompensated. You know what I mean? Um, so the, the problem of the um, of this 15% of the amount of the claim alleged is if I am requesting just 10,000 uh, euros, my salary for five months, the 15% of those 10,000 uh, 10, euros is what else, uh, 150 euros. No? 150 euros, yeah. 1,000. No, 1,000, sorry, 1,000, sorry. 1,500 euros. So the, 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 the security is quite low, but the, the, the damages in case of a wrongful arrest are very high, are huge because we are talking about on a ship for a value of five uh, million with a lot of cost, uh, with a lot of uh, fees, port, etc. So it's not understandable the reference for the Spanish court, for the Spanish legislation to refer the 15% to the claim claim. That is the, the case that in the process of amend our Spanish legislation, uh, my legislation, as I said before, we, we are in a process of amending, this condition is going to be visible from, from the text, okay? Because it has not sense. Um, okay. Uh, Would you wrap it up for a conclude because- Oh yeah, sure, sure. The, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Well, the, um, I'm not going to explain the process of our state because it's quite, I, I'm going to give you the, we will the, put the, the slides, yes. uh, obviously, but remember the, 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 the commercial courts are the competent court for the, for the arrest. Um, uh, the claimant of the merit, you have to, once you have request the arrest and the arrest has been granted, you have 20 days for uh, present the main claim. Uh, if the courts are in Spain for the main claim, or between 30 and 90 days if the court of the main claim is abroad. Okay. And so, in order to implement the, the, the arrest, the process is the court is going to contact with the harbor buster in order to request arrest or even the marking office to, to, to the to attention of the ship and the, the, the ship owner will contact with the PNI club, etc, uh, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And well, we have uh, some situation in case of the release from, from the ship from the arrest. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much.